so if a particle or an object is restricted to move along a straight line to trace its motion we need what we need only one direction that is one coordinate okay or one axis we can say we can mark some origin and distances towards right they are positive the distances towards left okay displacements towards left are negative right and using this only the one axis we can uh, we can trace path of the object okay in one dimensional motion right using only one axis we can trace the path of object in one dimensional motion but to trace path of an object in two dimensions so any example of two dimensional motion let's suppose there is an ant uh, sorry ant okay so ant jumped in an ink and she runs on the floor okay so because she gets weight with uh, weight with the ink so her path will look something like this so now to trace this we need two axes okay here we need two axes right so to trace two dimensional motion we will need two axes we can call them x y y z or anything and we need one more mathematical quantity or entity we can say which is called vectors okay so we are going to talk about vectors now so there are two types of physical quantities one is called a scalar and other is called as vector okay so one type is known as scalar and the other type is known as vector so what is scalar so the physical quantities which have only magnitude and no direction they are known as scalar quantities okay so physical quantities physical quantities having magnitude only and no direction okay and vectors they have magnitude as well as direction so these are physical quantities physical quantities having magnitude as well as direction and direction okay so what are some examples of scalars and vectors speed speed so distance covered we can say so let's say some for an example this and okay so it starts at this point and it moves like this right so what is the distance covered it is total length of the path traversed okay total length of the path traveled by the and it is known as its distance covered okay and what is the displacement displacement is the shortest distance between start point and end point of the motion okay so the distance covered is scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity why because there is no direction to displace oh, sorry to distance but there is a specific direction to displacement and what's that specific direction it is from start point it is directed from start point towards the end point okay and it's along this straight line right so for an example the distance covered is scalar and the displacement of an object is a vector okay so any question in this no sir okay so now if you divide distance by time you get speed so it is scalar divided by another scalar time is a scalar quantity okay time doesn't have any direction right so distance covered upon time gives us speed so speed is another scalar quantity then similarly we can say work is a scalar quantity energy is an example of scalar quantity and here if you divide displacement by time you get velocity so velocity is a vector then acceleration is a vector quantity okay then force is a vector momentum is a vector angular momentum is a vector so there are lots of scalar quantities and lots of vector quantities in physics 
okay so how do we add scalars scalars they have only magnitude and no direction that means when we add scalars we just add numbers okay and how do we add vectors we'll see right so because now scalars are just numbers magnitude means a number right it will have some units but it's just a number okay but these quantities vectors they have magnitude as well as direction so now it becomes important to study about vectors okay in order to understand physics and also motion in a plane so vectors are represented by arrows in space so let's suppose this is force acting on some body so it will have magnitude as well as direction okay so when i want to write it's a vector quantity how do i write it i will write force f for force and i will put <clears throat> an arrow on top of f so this arrow it tells me that it's a vector quantity there is another way another way to represent vectors and that is we draw them in bold faces okay in bold letters okay but here we'll mostly use arrows only not mostly 100% of times we'll use arrows okay so now this is suppose force acting on some body it will have some magnitude and direction so direction is clear it is directed along this line but how do we find magnitude so do you know so magnitude is represented by the length of that arrow okay so this arrow has got information about both things the magnitude as well as the direction so magnitude is length of the arrow and direction is along the direction of that line okay so simple so now let's suppose this is how many pi units okay what is unit of force it's newton so let's suppose this is force of 5 newton okay so now i mean if i take one fifth of length of this arrow how much will be the force 1 newton right the magnitude of a vector it is represented uh, by what length of the vector so i am saying this vector is 5 newtons so if i take 1 fifth of the length of this vector how much would that be how much would be the value of that vector it is 1 by 5 times the magnitude of this vector right yes sir yes sir okay and if i draw five arrows of this length okay so then if i add these five arrows small arrows so all of these they have magnitude of 1 newton so if i add these five i will get this force right i get this force okay no, sir. so this small vector which has magnitude of 1 unit it is known as unit vector okay so what is unit vector unit vector is a vector directed in specific direction and it has magnitude of 1 unit so it's a vector having magnitude of 1 unit one unit okay and how do we represent unit vector so this vector this much arrow i am representing by f bar and this f bar is force acting on a body so if i want unit force one newton of force acting on that body so how do i draw that i draw it like this okay by a vector having magnitude of one unit okay it can be one centimeter one meter so if this is five meters this will be 1 meter if this is 5 centimeters this will be 1 centimeter okay and to show that it's a unit vector i put a cap on top of this f so what does f cap mean it means that this is a unit vector in direction of this force okay it's a unit vector in direction of this force right okay yes sir all right yes, sir. so now see here i have written this f bar is equal to 5 times n so 
if i add five vectors like this okay five vectors like this f cap i will get this f bar so i can write f bar is equal to five times f cap and here i have written five times n okay five sorry five newtons so this is actually the magnitude of f bar this is actually magnitude of f bar so how do i write magnitude so if i take vector and draw this absolute absolute value symbol it gives me the magnitude this means the magnitude of vector okay so it is five newtons is the magnitude right so now i can write this f bar as its magnitude multiplied by f cap a unit vector in that direction okay so f bar is equal to magnitude of f bar multiplied by f cap and therefore i can write f cap equals to f bar divided by its magnitude okay so then there are some terms regarding the vectors so the first term is equal vectors what is fixed vector a vector which cannot be moved and what is a free vector a vector which can be moved anywhere in space provided we don't change its magnitude and the direction okay so then if we know about the free vectors we get definition of equal vectors so what would be equal vectors so equal vectors are the vectors having same magnitude and same direction okay so equal vectors are the vectors having same magnitude and the same direction so this is one vector and i have another vector so i can draw it like this so these two have same length and they are directed in a straight line so if this vector is a bar i am calling the other one as b bar so a bar and b bar are equal vectors if their magnitude is equal okay so length of a bar is equal to length of b bar and they are directed in same direction okay so this is one possibility that they are directed in along a same straight line or you can draw them parallel to each other so if i draw a vector like this so this is suppose c bar okay so the c bar has magnitude equals to a bar and also that of b bar so c bar is equal to a bar and also b bar okay so equal vectors can be along same straight line or they can be parallel to each other so if vectors have mag same magnitude and if they are directed in same direction then we'll call we'll call them equal vectors so this is any question in this no sir no sir no sir okay next zero vector so what is a zero vector so now let's suppose i take this a bar and this b bar okay and i do this operation a bar minus b bar so what will be the answer zero vector it will be zero right but because on left hand side of equation i have vectors on right hand side of the equation i should have vector quantity okay so therefore we put a bar on top of the zero and we call it a zero vector okay so what is zero vector zero vector you will get when you do some arithmetic operation on vectors and the answer is zero but that answer is a vector quantity okay so it's not directed uh, in any direction because it doesn't have any magnitude so there is no question of being directed in any direction but 
zero vector is mathematical concept okay so on left hand side of equation you have vector quantities on right hand side of equation you must have a vector quantity right so this is a zero vector so just to say that the zero we got from mathematical operation on vector quantities we put an arrow on top of the zero and it is known as zero vector or there is another term for it it is also known as null vector so now see let's suppose let's consider motion of some object so this object starts from this point it's moving along some plane so it starts from <coughs> i'm sorry this object starts from this point it moves along some path and reaches this point okay so how much is its displacement its displacement is this much right let's call it s1 bar so the object starts at point a it moves till the point b so its displacement is s1 bar then starting from point b it goes somewhere else okay so it moves like this till this point so how much would be its displacement let's suppose this is s2 bar okay so the body sorry the object starts at this point it moves along some path reaches point b so till this part of its motion the displacement is s1 bar then again it starts from this point and moves to the point c it starts at b move to the point c then its partial displacement for this part of the motion is s2 bar so what would be the total displacement total displacement is a vector okay a straight line starting at start point of starting at the start point and ending at the end point okay so what is its total displacement its total displacement is this much okay length of this line and let's call it r bar so now this is common sense that r bar will be equal to what total displacement is sum of partial displacements so can i say r bar is equal to s1 bar plus s2 bar Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. so here we get a law and this is known as triangle law of vectors addition okay and what does the law say if two vectors are represented by two sides of a triangle taken in an order then the resultant is represented by the third side of the triangle and that resultant starts at the start point of first vector and it ends at the end point of second vector okay so it is simple yes sir. yes sir so what does the taken in an order mean taken in an order means second vector will start at the end point of first vector okay so taken in an order means what second vector will start at the end point of first vector now let's suppose i want to subtract s2 bar from s1 bar what should i do now i have added s1 bar and s2 bar so i have added s2 bar to s1 bar and i got this r bar now i want to subtract s2 bar from s1 bar i need to draw vector of magnitude equal to this s2 bar but in opposite direction right yes sir and it is known as negative vector so what does a negative vector mean so that's another term negative vector means a vector having uh, a magnitude equal to some vector but it is directed in opposite direction to that vector okay so here this is s1 bar this is s1 bar and this is s2 bar s2 bar is directed like this so what will be direction of minus s2 bar minus s2 bar will be directed like this okay so minus s2 bar will be directed like this so it will have same magnitude as that of s2 bar 
okay so this is minus s2 bar and now if i join the start point and end point okay so if i join the start point to this in end point i will get some vector and what will be that vector let's suppose it is s bar so this s bar is equal to s1 bar plus minus s2 bar and that means it is s1 bar minus s2 bar so i have subtracted s2 bar from s1 bar got it so now if i take this vector and let's call it s1 bar this is s2 bar s2 bar then i will take another vector s3 bar this is s3 bar <coughs> i'm sorry so on and so forth okay so if i add s1 bar and s2 bar what do i get i get a straight line starting at the start point of s1 ending at end point of s2 okay so this is resultant of s1 bar and s2 bar right so this is the resultant of s1 bar and s2 bar okay by the way what is resultant resultant means the vector that you get by addition or subtraction or any arithmetic operation of two vectors okay so this is resultant of addition of s1 and s2 bar s1 plus s2 bar now if i add this vector and this vector what do i get i will get a vector which is directed like this okay so i will get a vector let's change the color a vector which is directed like this right so i can <coughs> sorry i can go on like this so what i have done now i am representing these three vectors by three sides of this quadrilateral okay so these three vectors are represented by three sides of a quadrilateral taken in an order so taken in an order means what the second vector will start at the end point of first vector third vector will start at the end point of second vector so on and so forth okay then what is their resultant so their resultant is represented by the remaining side of the quadrilateral and it starts at the start point of first vector and it ends and the at the end point of last vector this is clear so we can call this yes sir we can call yes. this quadrilateral law okay because the other one the previous one we called it triangle law so this can be called as a quadrilateral law but we can go on like uh, we can draw another vector like this okay so i can draw another vector like this and i can call this i can call this s4 bar okay and then what will be resultant of s1 s2 s3 and s4 bar it will be a straight line starting at this point ending at this point okay so this will be the resultant so what is this this is s1 bar plus s2 bar plus s3 bar plus s4 bar and now see what we have got so we have 1 2 3 4 4 sides of a uh, pentagon okay and this four sides they represent four vectors and we are taking them in an order so the resultant is represented by what it is represented by the left over side okay the remaining side of the pentagon and the resultant starts at the start point of first vector ends at the end point of last vector so now we can call this pentagon law okay so in general we can say there is a polygon law of vectors addition and it goes like this if n minus 1 vectors are represented by the n sided polygon then 
the resultant will be represented sorry the resultant will be represented by what it will be represented by the remaining side of that n sided polygon sorry polygon starting at the start point of first vector ending at end point of the last vector so polygon law is clear yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. all right so this is polygon law of vectors addition okay so now this is geometric method of addition of two vectors and we'll find a formula for that but before that let's talk about resolution of vectors let's talk about resolution of vectors so let's suppose this is a vector this is r bar and how do we get this r bar so we get this r bar by addition of this a bar this vector and b bar okay so this is my a bar this is my b bar if i add a bar and b bar i get this r bar so this resultant i get from addition of a bar and b bar so now i can say that this <coughs> i'm sorry so now i can say that r bar is resolved in a bar and b bar so if a vector can be represented as an addition of two vectors addition or subtraction you can say then we say that the vector is resolved along those vectors so here the r bar this r bar can can be represented as a bar plus b bar then i can say the r bar is resolved in a bar and b bar okay so r bar is equal to a bar plus b bar so this a bar and b bar they are known as the components of this vector the vectors along which this vector is resolved they are known as the components of this vector okay so this is resolution in general but we are interested in a particular kind of resolution and it is known as resolution in rectangular components and why so it's because this kind of resolution is easy it is convenient for addition subtraction etc okay so see what is resolution in rectangular components so i will draw x axis and y axis and let's suppose i want to resolve this vector this is my r bar so i will take two vectors one along x axis one along y axis so these two vectors are perpendicular to each other right so i will take these two vectors and i will add them to get r bar then i can say that r bar is resolved along those two vectors one along x axis one along y axis okay so see i will draw perpendicular from tip of this r bar on x axis and the y axis they meet at these two points so i will call the component along x axis as rx bar and the component along y axis as ry bar so this is x axis this is y axis okay so if i add this vector rx bar and ry bar i get what i get r bar okay so do i get r bar if i add them see we talked about three vectors so if i take this r by bar and i move it here okay if i put it here so i can draw a vector like this this is my r by bar okay so rx bar plus r by bar will give me r bar yes no yes sir yes, yes sir okay so the vectors that we use in physics they are free vectors by free vectors we mean they can be moved anywhere in space provided we don't change we don't change their magnitude and direction so i can move this r y bar over here at the end of r x bar okay and i put it there so i can add r x bar and r y bar using our law which is the triangle of vectors addition so this vector plus this vector gives me r bar 
okay so now these two vectors are perpendicular to each other okay so r bar is resolved along these perpendicular vectors or we can say rectangular vectors so by rectangular vectors we mean the angle between them is 90 degrees okay okay <clears throat> so angle between them is 90 degrees so this is resolution this is specific type of resolution so resolution doesn't mean that it needs to be the components uh, need to be perpendicular to each other all the time okay so there is general kind of resolution which is like this so this is clear yes sir yes sir yes sir so now there would be some angle between a component along x axis and this vector that angle is suppose theta so how do i find that theta so now i can write r bar is equal to rx bar plus ry bar then i can write this vector any vector i can write it as the magnitude of vector multiplied by unit vector in that direction so i can write this as rx what is rx so rx is the magnitude of rx bar ry is magnitude of ry bar okay so i can write this as rx multiplied by unit vector in this direction which direction is this x direction so unit vector in x direction you can write it as x cap or you can write it as i cap so it is generally called as i cap okay so i will use that notation i will call it i cap but sometimes it can be written as x cap too so it is rx multiplied by i cap plus ry multiplied by j cap this is my r bar okay so now next so how much is magnitude of rx how much is length of rx bar it is equal to rx how much is length of r by bar it's equal to r by so now if you see this triangle in this triangle you can write tan of theta what will be tan of theta what will be tan of theta here r by theta r by divided by rx the length of opposite side divided by length of adjacent side right so it is r by upon rx and therefore i can say theta equals to so i will take tan inverse on both sides of the equation okay so if i take tan inverse of tan it gets cancelled out the function and its anti function you can say they get cancelled out so what do you get you get tan inverse of r by divided by rx okay so all right so this is clear yes sir okay i yes, sir. i said anti function it is called as inverse function right anyway so this thing is clear right so see this resolution of vectors in rectangular components it is remarkable idea how is it remarkable let me explain so let's suppose i write one vector a bar okay so a bar will be some vector directed in a plane so it is let's say let's suppose it is resolved like this 3i cap minus 5j cap okay and i have another vector b bar which is 4i cap plus 2j cap and now i want to add a bar and b bar so how do i add them it's very simple just add x component to x component y component to y component that's it so earlier you can see that if you want to add these two vectors you have to draw them you have to draw another vector starting from start point of first one ending at end point of second one but if you represent a vector in component form in rectangular component form then it's very simple to add or subtract them or even multiply them we'll see that later but see it's very simple what will be the resultant so if c bar is equal to a bar plus b bar so what will be c bar just equal to 7i cap minus 3j cap right just add x component to x component 
y component to y component. Very simple. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So this is resolution in uh, two rectangular components. So this is for a plane. So sometimes we need to talk about vectors in space. So the earlier resolution that we discussed about is two dimensional resolution. This one that we are going to see the resolution in space, it is three dimensional resolution. Okay. So <clears throat> why do we need, <coughs> I'm sorry, why do we need this? Because sometimes we need to study the problems in space. Okay. So we'll draw x coordinate, y coordinate, and z coordinate like this. This is my x coordinate x axis y axis z axis and this is my vector which i want to resolve okay so what should i do i will draw a perpendicular okay this is my vector this is r bar and i want to resolve this so i will draw a perpendicular like this it meets at some point on this exit plane. So from there, I can draw two vectors. So I will draw a perpendicular from here on Z axis. And suppose it meets at this point. So then this will be my Rx bar and this is my Rz bar. Okay, this is my Rx bar. And this one is my, this one is Rx bar, this one is Rz bar. And then from this point, I can draw a perpendicular, okay, on y axis also. So before that, I will draw this line. I will draw this line. So can you tell me how much would be this vector? Can you tell me how much would be this vector? So can you see this diagram? Minus r vector. No, no, it's not minus r. So in terms of rx and rz, can you think? Yes. Rx plus rz. So it will be rx plus rz. See, if I take this rz bar and put it over here, okay? So rx bar plus rz bar will give me this vector, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is Rx bar plus Rz bar. Okay. It's this vector. And then I will draw perpendicular from here. Okay. So why didn't I uh, draw it earlier? It's because, okay, uh, if I had drawn like li line like this, so you would say it's not a perpendicular. This is a 3D diagram we are drawing on a plane. Okay. So I have drawn, okay, I am drawing perpendicular using this. All right. So I have drawn this perpendicular and it meets at this point. So this much is suppose my RY bar. Okay. So now I can say this line plus this line. Okay, this vector plus this vector will give me R bar, right? I can move this R y bar over here. Okay, I can put it here. So this is my R y bar. So R x plus R z plus this R y bar will give me this resultant, right? Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, so this is my resolution. So R x bar plus r bar can be uh, written as what r bar is equal to r x bar plus r y bar plus r z bar okay and now if you think here how much would be angle between this r x bar and r z bar <coughs> it's 90 degrees right yes sir yes sir so how much would be magnitude of this vector? So 
how do we find the magnitude uh, how much would be the magnitude of this resultant we found the direction right how much would be the magnitude how much would be the length so the angle between rx and ry is 90 degrees right so this is a right angle triangle so i can say rx square plus ry square will give me r square using the pythagoras theorem yes no yes sir yes sir so r square equals to rx square plus ry square and therefore r the magnitude of the resultant vector in resolution is square root of rx square plus ry square okay so if we resolve a vector along two perpendicular components the magnitude of resultant is square root of magnitude of first vector square plus magnitude of second vector square so this is simple right this is simple okay yes sir yes sir all right so now now can you tell me how much would be magnitude of this vector this vector is rx bar plus rz bar so let's give it some name okay so let's call it what a bar we can say this is my a bar which is equal to rx bar plus rz bar how much would be its magnitude root of rx square plus rz square right so this vector a bar is equal to this rx bar plus plus rz bar and angle between now so what angle you see is not the angle okay this is a 3d diagram drawn a 2d paper okay so how much is angle between rx and rz it's 90 degrees okay so it doesn't look like 90 but it is 90 degrees okay so this angle here is 90 degrees so you get rx square plus rz square equals to this vector square a square that means a is equal to what or i can say just a square is equal to rx square plus rz square okay and then then here you can see this r is equal to what r bar is equal to this a bar plus r y bar okay so r bar is equal to a bar which is rx bar plus rz bar plus r y bar and this angle is also 90 degrees so r square is equal to a square plus r y square or a square plus r y square okay so r square is equal to a square plus r y square and therefore you get r square is equal to <coughs> sorry it is rx square plus rz square plus ry square and therefore r is equal to what square root of rx square plus ry square plus rz square okay this is clear how do we get this magnitude yes, yes sir okay all right and similar to the previous case this one can also be represented as so rx rx bar ry bar rz bar they can be represented as the magnitude multiplied by unit vector okay so unit vector along x axis is i cap along y axis it is known as j cap and unit vector along z axis is known as k cap so i can say that r bar is equal to rx multiplied by i cap plus ry multiplied by j cap plus rz multiplied by k cap okay <coughs> so this is how we resolve a vector in three perpendicular components so this is clear yes sir, <coughs> yes, sir. i'm sorry so there is little cold still anyways okay so this is good so now See, just like we resolve two vectors along two components, 
we can resolve them in three perpendicular components and we can perform addition or subtraction. So, in, in that case, let us suppose a bar is equal to 5i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap and b bar is equal to 3i cap plus 2j cap plus k cap, 1k cap. What will be the resultant if c bar is equal to a bar plus b bar? Just add x component to s com x component, y component to y component and z component to z component, right? So tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 8i cap plus 4j cap plus 4k cap. 8i cap plus 4j cap plus 4k cap. Okay, good. Okay, so let's discuss the parallelogram law of vectors addition. So this is my p bar, this is my q bar. So p bar plus q bar gives me r bar. So this is using the triangle law. Now we can move this q bar as we discussed about the free vectors. So we can move this q bar over here and I can draw the q bar like this. Okay. So this is my q bar. So now see. This is the vector having same magnitude and it's directed in same direction. Okay. So equal vectors can be directed in the same line or they can be parallel to each other. Okay. So this is Q bar. So P bar plus P bar plus Q bar gives me what? It gives me R bar. So if I complete, if I join this tail of this, uh, this vector, tail of this vector. Okay. So, what do I get? I get a parallelogram. I get a parallelogram. Okay. And now you can say this is point A, B, C, D. So, see, in this parallelogram, the two vectors are represented by two sides of parallelogram. Okay. This parallelogram and they start at the same point. So, they start at the same point. That means they are concurrent. Then the resultant is represented by the diagonal of that parallelogram. And the diagonal, which diagonal? The parallelogram has got two diagonals. Okay. So the diagonal which starts at the same point as that of those two vectors. So this is the parallelogram law of vectors addition. Is the law clear? Now this can be represented as, okay, this can be said like this. The two vectors are represented by two sides of a parallelogram. They are starting at the same point. Okay. Then the resultant is represented by the diagonal of parallelogram, which starts at the same point as that of those two vectors. Okay. This is parallelogram law of vectors addition. Okay. So theta is the angle between E bar and Q bar. Then the magnitude of resultant, the magnitude of resultant. It is given as square root of p square plus q square plus 2 times p multiplied by q multiplied by cos of theta. Okay. So, the square root of magnitude of first vector square plus magnitude of second vector square plus 2 times the magnitude of first vector multiplied by magnitude of second vector multiplied by cos of the angle between two vectors. Okay. And let's suppose this one makes an angle alpha with the first vector. Which one is first? Let's suppose p bar is first. So the angle alpha can be written as so alpha is equal to tan inverse of q sin theta divided by p plus q cos of theta. Okay. So alpha is the angle between resultant and p bar. So what is value of alpha? It is tan inverse of q sin theta, q sin theta, okay, divided by p plus q cos theta. Is it clear the formula? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So now let's suppose the angle between resultant and the second vector, r bar and q bar. This angle is beta. So can you tell me how to find beta? 
So beta will be tan inverse of something. Yes. Yes. So how to find beta? Can you tell? See, alpha. Yes. Yes, Priti. So tan inverse p sin theta q mm -hmm. plus p cos theta. Q plus p cos theta, right. Okay. So just change first vector to second vector, second vector to first vector. Because there is nothing, I mean nothing specific about the p, this vector, in this formula. Okay. So symmetry says that if this is the formula for an angle for uh, angle between e bar and r bar then formula for angle between r bar and q bar it should be what just replace p to q and q to p okay because any vector can be first and anyone can be second vector right yes sir yes okay. sir so we can say tan in beta is equal to tan inverse of it will be p sin theta divided by q plus p cos of theta all right so this is simple yes sir okay and there is another law which is known as sine rule so sine rule says that r divided by sine of the angle between other two what are other two it is p bar and q bar so that angle is theta it's equal to it's equal to uh, p divided by sine of the angle between other two so sine of beta and it's equal to q divided by sine of the angle between other two so if i take q it will be sine of alpha so this this thing is clear sine rule is clear yes sir. yes sir so sometimes we can use sine rule to find out the angle okay so let's suppose i know magnitude of p magnitude of r and i know beta so i can find out theta using this formula sine rule okay okay see this question if uh, magnitude of a bar plus b bar is equal to magnitude of a bar plus magnitude of b bar then the angle between a bar and b bar will be so see either you can use the formula so let's suppose r bar is equal to a bar plus b bar you can do this thing so how much is r magnitude of the resultant the square root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos of theta okay right Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now this this is equal to they are saying that magnitude of r. Okay, so r is equal to magnitude of a bar plus magnitude of b bar. So it is a plus b. Okay, so this must be equal to the term inside the bracket must be equal to what a plus b square. Then only you will get this thing is equal to uh, r is equal to what. A plus B. Yes, no. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So this is equal to A plus B. That means the term inside the bracket is A plus B square. So what is A plus B square? It is A square plus B square plus two times AB. Okay. And that means the cos theta is equal to one. And now you can say how much will be angle? So we know cos zero is one. Zero so degree. Right? Zero degree. So angle is zero degrees. Okay. So then next thing. So what is the other way in which you can think? So let's suppose you take two vectors. Okay, you take two vectors. So if I keep them perpendicular to each other. So this is suppose magnitude of first vector is three. Magnitude of second vector is four. Okay, how much would be the magnitude of resultant? Sir, 
answer five. It will be five, right? So, in what way I should keep two vectors such that the resultant, the resultant is just sum of. Uh, sorry, in what way should I keep the vector such that the magnitude of the resultant, magnitude of addition of two vectors, resultant, okay, is equal to sum of their magnitudes. Yes, sir. I should keep them in a straight line. Okay. If I have two vectors like this, this is first vector and this is second vector. Okay. So, magnitude of first one is, suppose it's 3, magnitude of second one is 4. So, this is my A, this is my B. If resultant is equal to A plus B, there can be no other combination, no other angle which can give you A plus B. The resultant, uh, magnitude of resultant as A plus B. Only it can be along a straight line or if they are parallel to each other. That means the angle between them is 0. Yes, no? Yes. Because if you change the, if you change the angle, what happens? The resultant will get shortened. Okay. So, 5 is, it is less than 3 plus 4. Right. You take any other angle. This is 90 degrees. This is for simplicity. You take any other angle than 0. What will happen? The magnitude of resultant will be less than. So, in general, in general, the magnitude of resultant will be less than magnitude of A bar plus magnitude of B bar. But if we want to include this case, which case? If they are along straight line, A bar and B bar along straight line, then magnitude of resultant will be equal. So, I can say this is the general rule. So, magnitude of resultant of addition of two vectors is less than or equal to sum of the magnitudes of two vectors. This is clear. Let us move on to the next problem. If the magnitude of sum of two vectors is equal to magnitude of difference of two vectors, okay, the angle between these vectors is yes. Magnitude of sum of two vectors is equal to magnitude of difference of two vectors. All right. So, one way is using this formula, we can solve the question. Another way is just little thinking. See, this is first vector. Its magnitude is, okay, suppose something. There is another vector. So, this is another vector, B bar. Okay, if you add A bar to B bar, you will get this vector, suppose this, this is C bar and it is equal to A bar plus B bar. Okay. And now, if I want to subtract B bar from A bar, what should I do? So, this is my A bar. I am sorry. This is my A bar. This is my <coughs> minus B bar, B bar. Okay. So, this much would be the resultant. This is A bar minus B bar, right? So, how do I put them such that A bar plus B bar is equal to A bar minus B bar? What should be the angle between A bar and B bar to make that happen? 90 degree. Must be 90, 90 degrees, degrees, right? Because minus B bar has same magnitude as that of B bar. So, this is A bar this is B bar, then resultant will be given by this side, okay, and its length is given by Pythagoras theorem, okay, right, and similarly, this is A bar, this is minus B bar, and this is the resultant, right, 
So a bar, this is minus b bar and this is suppose r bar, this is s bar. So the length of r bar will be equal to length of this s bar where s bar is equal to a bar minus b bar. Okay. So is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So do we need to solve this using the formula? We can solve. See, it's simple. So let's add a page. Okay, let's see using formula. So magnitude of A bar plus B bar is equal to magnitude of A bar minus B bar. Okay, so this will be C. So now when you take A bar plus B bar, let's come here. So this is angle between A bar and B bar. So how much would be angle and angle between A bar and minus B bar? So A bar is directed in positive x direction. That means it is directed in this direction. Okay, so how much would be this angle? If angle between A bar and B bar, or not this one. How much is angle between A bar and B bar? I did a mistake there. How much is angle between A bar and B bar? A bar is directed along this line. Okay. So this is angle between A bar and B bar. How much would be angle between A bar and minus B bar? Tell me. Okay. So this angle will be theta. Yes, no. Yes, sir. So this angle would be 180 minus theta. Yes, sir. Okay. So see, I can draw this minus B bar here itself. So this angle, which is this angle, this is equal to theta. So this angle is 180 minus theta. Right? What is happening? Is there some internet issue? No, sir. Okay. So now, uh, what can I say? How much would be the magnitude of A bar plus B bar? Square root of A square, A square plus, B square plus B square plus 2 times plus AB, 2 AB cos theta. Cos theta. And how much would be magnitude of A bar minus B bar? The square root of A square. A plus square, B square plus B square plus two minus two AB. AB cos theta. Yeah, it is cos of one eighty minus theta. Right? Yes, no. Yes, sir. And it will be minus cos theta. Right? Will it be minus cos theta? Yes, sir. Okay. So it is minus cos theta. Okay. So square root of a square plus b square minus two AB cos of theta and if we equate this this with this so we can square and equate so a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos of theta so this thing will get cancelled out this thing will get cancelled out and what do we get 2ab gets cancelled out AB. yeah so minus 4ab or we can cancel out 2ab with 2ab. So we can take that cos theta minus cos theta on left side. So 2 times cos of theta is equal to 0. That means cos theta is 0 and that means theta is equal to 90 degrees, right? Yes, sir. So next question. Two equal vectors have a resultant equal to either of the two, the angle between them is. Now you tell me. Oh, it's, it's mm, seven thirty. So, uh, can we extend for ten fifteen minutes, or should we stop? Yeah, we can extend, sir. No problem. Sanjay.
Yes, sir. No problem, sir. No problem, no. Okay. So, can you tell me two vectors have a resultant equal to either of the two? The angle between them is. So, if you add two vectors and the resultant length of the resultant is also equal to also equal to the two of them length of those two vectors so can you think of such a condition see we can solve it using formula no question, no issues see if i draw an equilateral triangle so this is my first vector this is the second vector how much would be resultant of these two how much would be resultant of these two so use your triangle law okay so this is suppose my a bar this is my b bar okay so a bar plus b bar will give me what this c bar okay this c bar so the length the magnitude of this resultant is equal to magnitude of a bar or it is equal to magnitude of b bar right so this must be the case yes no yes sir yes sir okay so how much is angle between a bar and b bar So 60. Okay. So okay. So in an equilateral triangle, the angle between two sides it is uh, 60 degrees. That's correct. But here a bar is directed like this. Okay. So this line and this line. How much is the angle between these two? 120. It is 120 degrees. Right, Sanjay? Yes, sir. Okay. So angle between these two is 180 sorry 120 degrees and using formula also we can solve this so what are they saying so we are adding a bar and b bar so magnitude of a bar is equal to magnitude of b bar so what is magnitude of resultant r is equal to r bar is equal to what a bar plus b bar so r is equal to square root of a square plus b square plus 2 times a b cos theta okay so how much is r it's equal to a or it is equal to b i will take it's equal to a okay so a is equal to square root of this thing so i will square everything so a square i get it is equal to a square plus a square plus what two times a multiplied by a multiplied by cos theta okay because b is equal to a so i have substituted a in place of b right yes sir yes sir so this and this gets cancelled so you can take 2 a square cos theta on left hand side it will become negative so minus 2 a square cos theta is equal to a square and therefore a square and a square gets cancelled out and you get cos theta equals to minus 1 by 2 okay so cos 60 we know it is 1 by 2 so how much must be the theta it must be 180 minus 60 degrees right so it is 120 degrees yes sir right yes sir yes sir okay so these are simple problems okay next one Okay, which of the following is not a vector quantity? Tell me which one of these is not a vector quantity? Weight, momentum, potential energy, nuclear spin. Which one? Nuclear spin. No, potential energy is the answer. Energy is a scalar. Right. Energy is a scalar quantity. Okay. Spin is a vector quantity. Okay, sir. Okay. 
which of the following statements is true when the coordinate axes are translated the components of a vector in a plane change when coordinate axes are rotated through some angle the components of vector change but <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> okay i'm sorry all right so which of the following statements is true when the coordinate axes are translated the components of vectors in a plane change then when the coordinate axes are rotated through some angle the components of vector change but vector's magnitude remains constant then sum of a bar and b bar is r bar if the magnitude of a bar alone is increased the angle between b bar and r bar decreases okay and the last one is the cross product of 3i cap and 4j cap is 12 so we didn't learn about the cross product yet but okay so can you tell me sir when uh, in the coordinate axis are rotated the angle changes sir. the magnitude remains constant that is correct sir because exactly. the vector's length will be same anyway exactly exactly that is the answer okay good so see suppose this is your vector okay and these are your coordinate axis okay x and y they are like this okay so if you rotate them if you rotate them see i have rotated x and y so earlier they were like this perpendicular now okay earlier uh, x was horizontal y is for, uh, what vertical now i'm rotating so is there any change in length of this vector no sir no no so length of the vector remains same magnitude remains same okay so answer is option b okay so other three do you want to check yes no when the coordinate axes are translated the components of vector in a plane change so see this is my x and y if i translate them if i move them like this okay this is translatory motion okay so will the uh, components of this vector change Are you kidding? No, sir. No. Okay, there won't be any change in the components, right? If you rotate, then components will change. Okay, if you rotate, then components will change. We can see that. Okay. So, this is your x and y axis, and suppose this is your vector. Okay, it's like this. So now you can draw the components. Okay. So let's suppose these are the axes. you you can draw the components so this one will be your x component this one will be y component okay x and y now you rotate x and y through some angle okay so let's suppose you rotate x and y with an angle theta okay so this is your new new y this is your new x okay so x prime y prime you are rotating them with an angle theta so now if you find the components of this vector along the new x and y it will not be same okay they will not be same as that of initial components okay so you can see x is increasing and y component is decreasing can you see that yes sir yes no can yes, you yes sir okay so x is increasing the magnitude of x component is increasing okay this length is small compared to this length right so the magnitude of x component is increase sorry uh, yeah increasing and the magnitude of y component so which was this much earlier now it is this much it is decreasing okay so magnitudes of components change but the magnitude of vector will not change the sum of x square plus y square okay so x component square plus y component square is square of the length of this vector so similarly even if you rotate the coordinate axis uh this new x component square plus new y component square will be equal to what square of the length of this vector okay this is clear yes sir yes sir okay so that's why its answer b 
and then you can check C sum of a bar a bar and b bar is r bar. If the magnitude of a bar alone is increased, the angle between b bar and r bar decreases. So does it decrease or increase? So we can check that. So see, <coughs> I'm sorry. So this is your a bar. Let's call this much vector as a bar and this one as b bar. So what will be uh, the resultant using the parallelogram law of vectors addition? I can say, I can say that this would be the resultant, right? This would be the resultant. And now it's given that what, what are you changing? You are changing the magnitude of A and you are increasing it. So if you increase the magnitude of A, so let's suppose your new A is this much. Okay. So now you can see what happens to the angle. Okay. So this was your R bar. This was your earlier R bar. And now your R bar becomes this. Okay. Your R bar becomes this one. If you increase A bar and keep B bar as it is. So R bar will change, right? So your R bar, new R bar is suppose R bar prime and the angle between B bar and R bar decreases. So is it decreasing or increasing? Increasing. Increasing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So there is rule of thumb. If you increase a vector, uh, there are two vectors, you increase one of them. Okay. So, what will happen to the resultant? The resultant will be, it will bend towards the increased vector. Right. That means the angle between uh, the resultant and the increased vector will decrease. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can think of it as forces okay so there are these two forces okay this force is let's say uh, some three three newtons this is five newtons resultant will be something like this now if you increase this one so the resultant will bend along this increased vector increased force right yes sir yes sir okay, yes, sir. okay. so that's why this is incorrect Okay. <coughs> All right. So cross product we didn't discuss till now. Cross product of 3i and 4j is 12. Is it 12? So do you know about cross product? Okay. So if I multiply two vectors. Okay. So cross product is i, j, k, ax, ay, az bx, by, bz. So do you know this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, what is your a and b? So a is just 3i cap and b is 4j cap. So, the, okay, the cross product of these two is 12, but, but, k -cap. Okay. yeah, will be 12 k cap. Okay, that is the missing part. Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you know, that's good. If you don't know, <coughs> still, cross product is a vector product. Okay. So, in simple language, it's a vector product. So, resultant should be a vector. It should not be a scalar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, that is not true. So, only one option is true. That's option B. Next question, if A bar is equal to B bar plus C bar, have scalar magnitudes of 5, 4, 3. So, A bar's magnitude is 5, B bar's magnitude is 4, C bar's magnitude is 3. Then the angle between A and C is, who can tell me? A bar is equal to B bar plus C bar, have scalar magnitudes, 5, 4, 3. Okay, so 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so these yes, three, sir. they form a right angle triangle. Okay. 
so this is suppose your b bar this is your c bar okay magnitude of b bar is 4 units magnitude of c bar is 3 units so 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square so the resultant will have magnitude equals to 5 this is a bar okay and then what is angle between a bar and c bar so this is the angle so tell me so length of this side is 3 length of this side is 4 right length of this side is 5 so this is the angle theta so what is sin theta and what is cos theta can you tell me cos theta is 3 by 5 3 by 5 and sin theta is 4 by 4 5 4 by 5 so theta equals to cos inverse of 3 by 5 okay so is there such an option yes option a right option d also there sir so it is cos inverse of 4 by 5 yeah option d you said oh <laughs> yes option d is also correct it is sin inverse of 4 by 5 okay so theta is sin inverse of 4 by 5 so maybe this is this can be uh, what do we say two options correct more than one option is correct kind of question right so let's move on to the next question if <coughs> I'm sorry. If vectors, this vector and this vector, are equal vectors, then value of a is. This is a extremely simple. Minus five. Yeah. Must be compare this and this. Okay, they are equal. Yes, sir. So phi equals to minus a. Okay, x component should be equal to x component y component should be equal to y component z component is equal to z component so minus a is equal to 5 so a equals to minus 5 which is this exam okay it has got five options so next question if a bar plus b bar equals to c bar and a plus b is equal to c then the angle included between a and b is now you should tell me this You should tell the answer. We discussed this yesterday. A bar plus B bar is equal to C bar and A plus B, the magnitude of A bar and magnitude of B bar, if you add them, you get magnitude of the resultant. So zero. Should be zero. Okay. Zero is the answer. Yes, sir. Right. We discussed this kind of question yesterday. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Next question. Three forces. A bar is equal to I cap plus J cap plus K cap. B bar is equal to this and C bar acting on body. To keep it in equilibrium. Then C is. Okay. So do you know what is equilibrium? Equilibrium of forces. If some body is in equilibrium, that means some of all the forces acting on that body is zero. Right. So, what is in equilibrium means sum of all the forces acting on the body is equal to 0. So, A bar plus B bar plus C bar is equal to 0 and you want C bar. So, C bar is equal to what? If you take A bar plus B bar on other side, you get minus of A bar plus B bar. Okay. So, just substitute A bar and B bar. What is that? I plus J plus K plus 2i minus j plus 3k. What is the answer? It is i plus 2i, 3i, j minus, <coughs> sorry, it gets cancelled and 3i plus 4j, uh, sorry, 4k, so minus 3i minus 4k. This should be option a. Option A. Option A is the answer. Okay, simple question. Next question. If vectors given below 
the parallel vectors are out of okay of the vectors given below the parallel vectors are so these are vectors a bar b bar c bar and d bar so can you tell how to check whether two vectors are parallel I'm sorry. <coughs> How to check whether two vectors are parallel? See, you have a vector, okay, this vector, and you have another vector, okay. So, suppose this is A bar and this is B bar, okay. So, can I say B bar is equal to, okay, can I say B bar is equal to some constant, some constant, let's call it K multiplied by A bar. Can I write like Yes, this? sir. Yes, sir. Okay, because yes, sir. if I multiply A bar with suppose 2, I will get vector whose length is this much. And it is directed in this direction. Okay. If I multiply it with 2.2 or something, I will get this vector which is directed towards right. Okay. Okay. And it has magnitude equal to this much. Right. So the parallel vectors can be represented as what? Some constant multiplied by other vector. Okay. If A and B are parallel, B can be written as some constant multiplied by A bar. And A bar can be written as some constant multiplied by B bar. Okay. So, therefore, what you can say is Bx times I cap plus By times J cap plus Bz times K cap is equal to that constant multiplied by Ax times I cap plus Ay times J cap plus Az times K cap. Okay. And from here, what do you get? So, Bx is equal to k times ax, by is equal to k times ay and bz is equal to k times az or I can say bx upon ax is equal to by upon ay and that is equal to bz upon az and that's equal to k. Can I say this? Yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, ratio of x to x component y to y component and z to z component will be equal okay and that is some constant so can we check now which of these vectors are parallel we can check sir option, option a. a option a yes option b option a or b this is b this b. Is b right b is correct <coughs> B is A and C. Okay, this one and this one. This one and this one. Right. And A is A and B. A and B. A and B are not in same direction because this has J cap. Okay. Uh, y component and this one doesn't have Y component. So, option B is the answer. So, see. Minimum number of unequal vectors which can give re zero resultant are actually two. How? Suppose this is A bar, okay, this is A bar and this is B bar, okay, this is B bar, sorry, not this one, okay, this is B bar, okay, so are you getting this, this is A bar, this is B bar, they have same magnitude but they are opposite in direction, so are they equal vectors? No, they are not equal. Okay. They have same magnitude. Their length is same. But they are directed opposite to each other. So, they are not equal vectors. So, if you add A and B, what do you get? You will get 0, right? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. So, answer is 2. If they ask it like this. But if they say the minimum number of unequal vectors. Okay the minimum number of vectors having different magnitude 
okay which can give zero resultant then the answer would be b okay three you will need three such vectors right if magnitude is not same then you cannot add this one okay so let's suppose you have this vector and this is your c bar okay so this is your c bar so can you add a bar and c bar and is the answer zero no sir no sir no okay so then you will need even if they are um, in same straight line okay or they are parallel to each other still you will need another vector okay you will need another vector to make a bar plus c bar plus that another vector equal to zero the addition of those three vectors will be zero right so minimum you need three so is it clear yes yes sir okay yes, sir so now let's suppose you take vectors like this this is your a bar okay this is uh this is b bar okay so you have one vector which is like this another vector which is like this now you want to make resultant of these two and some more vectors equal to zero how many vectors will you need only one right and it should be directed like this it should be directed from b to a okay so you can you can uh, understand it like this the starting from this point going to this point then from this point you are going to this point and from this point you are returning back to the start point okay so some of these three vectors will be equal to what zero okay so how many vectors you need at least three vectors which are not equal in magnitude yes no Yes, yes sir. sir all right next question there are n coplanar <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> there are n coplanar vectors each of magnitude v each vector is inclined to the preceding vector at an angle of 2 pi by n what is the magnitude of the resultant so can you imagine this question there are n coplanar vector what do you mean by coplanar they are in same plane okay they are in they lie on the same plane lie in a same plane okay and there are n such vectors n can be anything it can be 2 it can be 3 2 onwards okay 2 3 4 5 anything each vector is inclined to previous okay preceding vector at an angle of 2 pi by n what is the magnitude of the resultant okay so can we start with two okay let's start with two this is one vector okay and i want two vectors so magnitude of this one is b magnitude of next one will be equal to b and now i have 2 pi divided by n what is my n if i am starting with uh, the simplest case n is equal to 2 okay so take n equals to 2 i will take two vectors so 2 pi divided by 2 gives me pi so pi radians is how many degrees how many degrees 180 degrees Yes, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, two pi radians is three sixty degrees. So pi radians is one eighty degrees. That means the other vector I should draw is at an angle of one eighty degrees with respect to this vector. So the other vector should be directed like this. Okay, so this is our start point, and length of these two vectors, the magnitude is equal. 
Okay, so what is resultant of these two? Zero, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. so resultant is zero. So, see, here they are saying you take n coplanar vectors. Okay, so if we can't imagine, we can draw a picture. Okay, so let's, I mean, we should always start with simplest thing, simplest possible thing. And what is the simplest possible case here? It is n equals to 2. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So then uh, you can take n equals to 3, 4, 5, anything. Okay. If you take n equals to 3, what do you get? You will get 120 degrees, 120 because it's 2 pi divided by 3. Okay. So 120, 120, 120. So three vectors having same magnitude. Okay. Inclined at an angle of 120 degrees. So this is 120, 120. And third vector will be like this. Okay. So this is 120 degrees. And this is 120 degrees. Right. So will the resultant of these three equal to zero? Yes or no? Can you say? It's difficult to guess from here, from this diagram. So we can draw it like this. Okay. So see. This is first vector. The second vector is directed like this. Okay. And third vector. Third vector will be directed like this. How? See, this uh, first vector is directed along uh, this straight line. Okay, towards right. The second vector makes an angle of 120 degrees with respect to first vector. That means this angle would be 60 degrees. Okay. Then this vector is directed like this. This third vector makes an angle of 120 degrees with respect to this vector. So this angle would be 60 degrees. So now if you take equal lengths and draw three lines at 60, 60 degrees, you will arrive at the starting point. Right. That means if you add these three vectors, the resultant will be equal to what? It will be zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, so two onwards. Okay. So uh, exclude this case of two. So two onwards. I mean, if n is equal to three, four, five, anything. You will get a polygon. Okay, you will get a polygon. So, how are the vectors in that polygon? Uh, they are aligned with respect to each other with this angle 2 pi divided by n. So, what are you doing actually? You are dividing this total plane of 360 degree in 2 pi divided by n angle. Okay, so if you do that and draw it like this, you will always you will always get n sided polygon. Okay, so you will always reach at the starting point. Okay, are you getting this? Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, answer sir. of this will be yes, sir. zero. Okay, but we don't need to check three, four, and five. Okay, you can check one more like this. So let's say, let's suppose this is uh, what? This is first vector. Second vector is at 90 degrees with respect to first vector. How come? So if you take four vectors, it will be 2 pi divided by 4. That means pi by 2. Pi by 2 is 90 degrees. Okay, so first vector, this is second vector. Third vector will be like this. Okay. And fourth vector, if their lengths are equal, it will, it will be like this. So you will arrive at the origin. If all vectors are aligned. Okay, if angle between these vectors is 2 pi divided by n, right, you will always reach at the origin when you draw, when you finish drawing the last vector. So, <coughs> is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 
So this is actually a mathematical rule, but it is difficult to think about mathematical rules in an exam. So what should we do? We should start, we should solve using simplest possible case. So this is the simplest possible case. Okay. This thing is clear. Yes, sir. How to approach yes, this kind yes, of question? Because n can take various values, but whatever answer you get for your simplest possible case, it will be applicable to all the cases.